Loving and gracious God, I thank you for this opportunity, this calling you put upon my life, Lord. I thank you for the words that you share with me and for me to share with others. Lord, I just um, pray that the meditations of my heart, my mind, and my spirit will be pleasing to you. I pray that the words of my mouth would be yours, that I would step out of the way and let you take over. And it's all in Jesus' name that I pray. Amen. Amen. Well, today is Mother's Day. It is a day where we honor those who bore us and those who are like mothers to us. We usually want to give them something special on this day so that we can tell them how much we care about them, how much they mean to us. I remember um, buying cards for my mother, and the way I knew it was the right card, because I stopped crying when I was reading it, and I was like, yeah, that's the perfect card, because it's explaining exactly how I feel about my mother. Do you do that too? Yeah. <laughs> oh my. There are all sorts of like candies and gifts that we can give to honor the one who brought us into the world. Hold on. No, I'm not handing it to someone else. Going in and out. Come on. This one's much better, huh? Amen. Because some people say they can't hear me with the other one, so. Okay. Sorry about that. I can go all the way down the back and out the window with this one. Out the door, down the back, down the street. There we go. As I said, there are sort of like candies and gifts and just little things that we can buy our moms because we just wanna we just wanna show them how much they mean to us. And as I said, you know, we are God's gift to them, and we are their gift from God. There are things that, you know, we can buy them to make them look younger. You see all the, the commercials on TV, you know. There are moisturizers and makeups and hair dyes and treatments that we can buy our moms to make them look years low, years, years younger. It's like, you know, I love you, Mom, but you're looking older, so I thought I would buy you something that would make you look young again. <laughs> Okay, you know, I've earned all my gray hairs and my wrinkles, thank you very much. I just assume keep them, girls. Remember that always. I just assume keep them. <laughs> what is this obsession that humanity has for living forever? Okay, it seems that if uh, we show signs of aging, we just have to turn back the clock somehow. We want to live forever and you know, look young while we're doing it, but are we, as humanity, missing the mark on all this living forever, on eternal life? We've been going on a reading journey with one another, each Sunday, I told you guys to all bring your Bibles. All three of them have their own Bibles over here. They know about bringing Bibles to church. <laughs> and we are gathering the knowledge that we need as Christians, as Christ ambassadors to the world in need of a Savior. Now, Jesus wants us to go and do likewise, and to, to follow his example as we live out our lives. He wants us to follow his instructions. Some of the instructions, you know, they may not be words, but actions that Jesus showed his disciples. Now, I want each of us to look up the instructions for ourselves instead of me just reading it to you. Um, because I want you to know where it is. I want you to take my word for it. I want you to read it and experience it yourselves. So, here we go. 
Where have we been so far? Here we go. First instruction, Easter Sunday morning, go and tell. Go and tell that I'm alive. Next there was stay, wait, witness. We talked about that dog saying, train you the dog. Train the dog to sit and the dog's going, no, I don't want him, I don't want him, it takes off. And, you know, he needs to come back for further instructions. Well, we sometimes run off on our own, thinking we know what's going on without reading the instructions, and so we have to back up and read the instruction. We talked about touch and heal. Now we are called to touch and heal. Even those unlovely people that you think are you know, whatever or you would never even want to be near them, we are called to touch and to heal. Now, we can touch someone's life and heal them, even just in words. Even just a smile we talked about. You know, someone in the grocery store who's looked like they're having a bad day, you give them a smile and what happens? What happens? You can change a life by just one smile. That's all it takes sometimes. The next was beware and don't worry. And I said, these things really don't sound like they're, they, they should work together. Beware and don't worry. Because if we're supposed to be aware, aren't we supposed to worry? What he wants us to do is to be aware of the world around us. But not to worry because he's conquered the world and he is with us. So we are to not fear going out into the world for his sake. Hmm, where else have we been? We have been to our favorite one. Don't argue, agree to disagree. Kids need to know that one. Don't argue, agree to disagree. We as Christians have torn each other apart because we disagree with what somebody else has to say. Their traditions, their whatever they do, and we are called to be the body of Christ, not just, you know, the Methodists is their own body, and the Baptists are their own body, and the Pentecostals are their own body, and the Catholic just goes like that. No, we are all the body of Christ, and we are all needed to work together, not separate. So agree to disagree and just move on for Christ's sake, for his purpose in the world. That's a hard one. When we unite with one another, we can see God's kingdom come and his will be done on earth as it is in heaven. But we need to work together. The next thing that Jesus taught was, now it's kind of hard, this one's hard. Live now and forever eternal life. So what is meant by eternal life? Eternal life means escaping the power of death. This life is ruled by death. Everything that lives will die. Physically, there is no way to escape it, but death wasn't the end of the story for Jesus. God brought him back to life. And in the same way, death isn't the end for us in our story. The Bible says, for the wages of sin is death, but the free gift of God is eternal life in Christ Jesus our Lord. Eternal life also refers to the quality of this life. Now Jesus said, I came that they may have life and have it abundantly. Abundantly. In the original language means more extremely. When Ordinary life is routine and boring. Jesus gives you a new life that is extreme. Extreme. The places he'll take you. The things you'll see. He'll take you to big heights that you've never seen before. Now, Jesus, 
He had an instruction for the religious leaders of his day, and it was to remember that God was and shall always be the God of the living, and life with God was everlasting. You know, I'm reminded of the story of the rich young ruler. It's found in Matthew chapter 9, and it's verses 19 through 22. So let's read this scripture together, and, and let's see about what this eternal life thing means. So we are at uh, Matthew 9, no, sorry, Matthew 19, verses 16 through 22. Just then, someone came up and asked him, Teacher, what good must I do that I have eternal life? Why do you call me... Oh, sorry. Why do you ask me about what is good, he said to him. There is only one who is good. If you want to enter into life, keep the commandments. Which ones, he asked. <laughs> Jesus answered him, do not murder, do not commit adultery, do not steal, do not bear false witness. Honor your father and mother and love your neighbor as yourself. I have kept all of these, young, the young man told him. What do I still lack? If you want to be perfect, Jesus said to him, go sell your belongings and give it to the poor, and you will have treasure in heaven. Then come and follow me. When the young ruler heard that command, he went away grieving because he had many possessions. <laughs> many possessions. How many times do we as humanity count on our possessions? The man had done everything that he thought he needed for eternal life, but his priorities were a little skewed. He had much wealth, and that was more important to him. That was what he relied on. That was his God, small God, that took care of him, not the capital God of eternal life. We, too, can get caught up in the God of self-preservation. We don't live life for God because we're afraid of the cost. God wants us to live life to its fullest and depend on Him and not live a life of fear of tomorrow. He's more than enough for us. The leaders of Jesus' day really didn't get it. They felt that eternal life was after death. But as we live for God, to honor him, to do as Jesus did, we begin to live that eternal life here as we worship God with our actions and not just our words. The parable of the Good Samaritan found in Luke is a good example of that. Let's turn to Luke 10. And we're going to read verses 25 through 37 and hear about how we can live that abundant, eternal life here on earth. Say it for myself. 25 through 37. <clears throat> An expert of the law stood up to test him, saying, Teacher, what must I do to inherit eternal life? What is written in the law? He asked. How do you read it? He answered, Love the Lord your God with all your heart, with all your soul, with all your strength, with all your mind, and love your neighbor as yourself. You answered correctly, he told him. Do this and you will live. But wanting to justify himself, he asked Jesus, and who is my neighbor? Jesus took up the question and said, a man going down from Jerusalem to Jericho, and he fell into the hands of robbers. They stripped him, beat him, and fled, leaving him half dead. 
a priest happened to be going down the road, and when he saw him, he passed on the other side. In the same way, a Levite, when he arrived at the place and saw him, passed by on the other side. But a Samaritan, on his journey, came up to him. When he saw the man, he had compassion. He went over to him and bandaged his wounds, pouring olive oil and wine. Then he put the man on his own animal, brought him to an inn, and took care of him. The next day he took out two denarii, gave it to the innkeeper, and said, Take care of him. When I come back, I'll reimburse you for whatever extra you spend. Which of the three do you think proved to be a neighbor to the man who fell into the hands of robbers? The one who showed mercy to him, he said. Then Jesus said to him, go and do the same. Go and do the same. We live life eternal here by doing what God would have us do. Our rules and our regulations won't get us there. You see, you saw the story, okay, the priest and the Levite. Now, they were on the way up to Jericho, they were probably on the way up to the temple. Now, if they were unclean, they couldn't go into the temple. So they were afraid if this guy is dead and they touch him, they'll be unclean and not be able to go to the temple. Their rules and their regulations stop them from helping someone who was hurting, someone who desperately needed help. And then we have the Samaritan. The Samaritan was like the lowest of the low, okay, considered by the Jews, because they, they, they fought over where <laughs> they were supposed to worship God. They fought over that, and that's why they were split. Now the Samaritan person came by and he didn't care. He didn't care. He knew that this person needed help, and he helped him. Not only did he help him there, he took him to an inn and gave him a room to stay in until he was better. Which do you think Christ would have us do? It is only by accepting Jesus are we given eternal life. And it's only by following his example that we can live it, that we can live a preview of it here on this side of eternity. One of the most famous scriptures about eternal life is John 3.16. Now, okay, let's look at the scripture before and after so we can see it in the context. So we're going to look at John um, 3 verses 14 through 17. So it's John 3. I like John. <laughs> I like the way John does stuff. John 3, 14 through 17. You guys are much quicker getting to this than I am. Just as Moses lifted up the snake in the wilderness, so the Son of Man must be lifted up, so that everyone who believes in him will have eternal life. Let me repeat that. Everyone who believes in him will have eternal life. For God so loved the world in this way. He gave his only son, his one and only son, so that everyone who believes in him will not perish but have eternal life. For God did not send his son into the world that he might condemn the world, but that the world might be saved from him. Anyone who believes in him is not condemned, but anyone who does not believe it is already condemned because he has not believed in the name of the Son, the one and only Son. Hmm. Anyone who believes in him will have <coughs> eternal life. We are given eternal life through Jesus Christ. Yeah. You agree? <laughs> See, he's saying, yeah, he knows what I'm talking about. We shall have eternal life through and only through Jesus. Jesus, who is our kinsman redeemer. Jesus, who is our savior. Jesus, who is our healer. Jesus, who is all providing. 
Jesus, our risen Lord, who conquered sin and death for you, and he conquered sin and death for me. Okay, go tell, wait witness, stay wait witness, touch and heal, be on guard, don't worry, don't argue, agree to disagree, love the main thing, live now and forever. These instructions really are simple, they really are. Eternal life is God's own life living in you and me. If you want to know what it means, look at the kind of life Jesus lived. Piercing insight into the most troubling and confusing, confusing problems people face. Strength to win the struggles with sin that people usually use. It's God's miracle working power that turns impossible situations into exciting victories. But we as Christians sometimes, well, we, we forget that we can have an abundant life here on earth, not just in eternity. We have spent so much time learning the instructions Jesus gave his disciples then and all will follow. If we ignore his instructions and not follow them to the point of us truly being the image of Christ, our commissioning that Christ gave all of his disciples, we cannot live out our calling in our lives. As I've said before, there's going to be times when we forget the instructions. Uh, and I've also said the only way of remembering and reading God's is reading God's word each day, which we talked about with the kids, reading God's word each day, being with other Christians and, and you know, everything else that gets us closer to Jesus and God. If we spend time daily with the author of the manual, Emmanuel, there we go, as you more excited, we will have more of a chance of following the instructions in our lives. Maybe if we begin to listen and follow the commissioning that Christ has put on all of our lives, maybe, just maybe, we can start turning the tide of the chaos in the world into order, God's order. I know it looks so overwhelming, but it all happens one person at a time. Maybe someday we really will be that body of Christ, working for God's kingdom, working together at the well-oiled machine, bringing about the kingdom of God. But it's a choice, it's yours and mine, as I've said so many times. Do you think, now here we go, do you think that if we started to live our lives the way God would have us live, that we would have a glimpse of eternity here on earth? Think about it, would we? I say yes, of course, with the help of the Holy Spirit, which guides us in all truth, the truth of our God and our King. As we live the life as if we were in God's presence now, we would want to bring others into that glorious life. If people saw the glory of God upon us, maybe, just maybe, we could help them see eternity. Maybe if we asked ourselves, do you want to live forever? we would not be like that rich young ruler and walk away because we don't want to put all of our eggs in one basket. The basket of abundance of our living God and our risen Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. Amen.